I do. Okay, okay everybody got everybody Some got a clean my, glass or a a glass. In one of the wine <coughs> classes that I took, they said to uh, to swirl it and smell it three times. Three times. Three times. Because most of us aren't used to smelling wines, and that's how many times it takes to really imprint what this smell is when you're someone who's just a, an average wine drinker, but it really helps. And to really stick your nose in there, too. Mm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, the nose on this is great. Uh, yeah, this, yeah, this is a fun this one. This is the one I always say sounds, uh, smells like a field of yes. flowers. Yeah. I get... Like you're on an open meadow. On the meadow smell. Yes, yeah. Mm -hmm. Boy, that's really a nice Cabernet. Mm-hmm. That one's very smooth. Yes. It just goes, slides right down. I know. <laughs> but yet it's got enough, as I was going to say, texture or enough consistency to carry it through my yeah. favorite ribeye steak kind yeah. of thing. Yeah. There's, there's some tannin that's what you I feel yes, on your tongue at yeah. the back. Yeah. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. I would suggest you might want to decant this for sure. Yes, that one we could, but in it's interesting, it doesn't bother me undecant it either. So. But just to get a little more oxygen to it to let yeah, it breathe. Right. Yeah, right, let it breathe a little. <laughs> And you know, obviously, we're just delicious. opening. It we're is. just opening as we go through the tastings. So yeah. right now. But I can see where it would open up more. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Even just swirling it a little bit. Mm -hmm. exactly. And this is all. All of these are from the Robertson Valley. Yeah, these are all Robertson Valley um, out of South Africa. So um, that, and of course, that's where the fair trade. Uh, um, this particular group comes from that particular mm -hmm. vineyard that is actually. Uh, run and owned and operated and the profits are all shared by the workers who create this particular wine. So I've, I've gone online mm -hmm. uh, in a map mm -hmm. app and uh, looked up the, the Robinson Valley. Yeah, it's oh really yeah. pretty. Yeah, it's beautiful. Oh, yeah. We've got some other pictures of it on the website which you can see. The, the interesting thing is that I don't think it's been mentioned so far is that the workers who have part ownership in the fair trade uh, production do work on other wines in that area. And so that's how the whole thing got started, was the fact that the vintners got together and made it possible for them to be owners of a vineyard on their own in addition to working for them. So that it was a total win-win situation because the, the current vineyards, some of whom have been there since the 1600s, 16, 1693 yeah. or something, something like that, like kind that. Of? Yeah, um, they've been producing wine down there. And so they were looking to make sure that they had people who could really still do the quality work that's necessary to produce that kind of information, that kind of quality product, rather. Uh -huh. So, anyway. Jan, in your research, what makes the Robertson Valley that area unique in terms of the, do you know, did it say anything about that in terms of, the, like, you know, you think about the different areas, like Spain and their Rioja mm -hmm. and, you know, the, the soil there. Was there anything in particular that you remember about what made it so unique? Um, the Robertson Valley had a whole lot of different uh, microclimates okay. so that they could make wines from a variety of grapes. They could grow them successfully and get them to make good wines. Mm -hmm. So it was just a lot of fun to be able to go on online and click on the satellite view, and you could see the you could see the vineyards. Wow. Yeah. 